What happens, there's a decision or has been a decision made early on in that process by a very small group of people that X number of dollars is going to education, Y number of dollars is going to uh, DHHS, and Z number is going to transportation. Then when we come together in a full appropriations committee meeting or even in the conference committee once the House and the Senate start arguing, there, because of the rules that are put in place, there cannot be any movement of money between those silos. It, that money is put there, it stays there, and they just move it around and shift it around between their programs and their uh, needs. And I don't think that in the long run in budgeting that that works. I don't think a business budgets that way. I don't think you budget at your home that way. You see how much money you've got and you have general, you start out with a general idea, but once you get down to the fine tuning and detailing, you need to be able to shift that money to a, the more effective use is where we want to see it. This is something that um, has bothered me for a number of years, and particularly the last four I've been down there. When you realize that the 52 uh, Republican representatives that were in power both terms when I was there represent 43% of the people of North Carolina, and those 43% had no voice in the budgeting issue. Uh, I was a little bit ticked during budget discussions because, of course, they go out on this tangent on the floor of justifying what they did, and, and they talked about how much they had wanted bipartisanship, and they talked about how the Republicans never offered any ideas or solutions, and then I just proceeded to point out to them how they made the conference committee up, and there was one Republican on every conference financial committee, and there were seven or eight Democrats. That's not representation for the 43% of the people that we represented when we got elected.